What if there were no consequences? What if there were no consequences? Hello, everyone. My name is Al Persson. You can contact me at pastor at mascot.church or in the comments below if you like. Um, if you like these videos, like, share, subscribe, and maybe they'll benefit somebody else. A slightly different conversation today. And by the way, this is my third run today. So I, I stopped the first one, didn't like it. I recorded the second one, was just about to close it. When I looked over, thought I didn't even start the recording. So, uh, <laughs> so this is my third. Well, it's not, I didn't intend to turn this into a long conversation today. It's a bit more chatty. We're just thinking about some things on a, on, on a slightly different level. This is Communion Sunday in our church. The first Sunday of the month, we celebrate the Lord's Supper Communion. And it's a Sunday wherein I am a little bit more intimate with my congregation. We talk a bit more about uh, our walk with God in a kind of a, in a more, I don't know, um, less intellectual, less heady sort of way, kind of get to the ground if we can on the, some of those things. Now, a, uh, the whole concept of consequences for our actions is important in this regard. I've been at this for a very long time and I've learned a lot. Oftentimes, uh, people have said to me uh, who get caught out, people get caught doing something wrong. Maybe it's um, uh, a financial thing or a relationship thing or something, you know, they're, they're, and, and they know. And, and, and you sit down and talk with them and open up the scriptures and they'll look at it and say, yeah, that's, I, I know that's wrong. And, uh, and people have said to me over the years, yeah, I've been doing it, but it hasn't affected me. Uh, no, it hasn't affected me at all. Uh, everything is fine. Uh, there are no consequences to the thing that I've been doing, even though I've been doing this for the longest time. Now, every time I hear that, I know I'm dealing with somebody in very significant trouble. Most people who are endeavoring to walk and talk close to their God, um, close to our Heavenly Father, never make a comment like that. We always are aware of the immense, the infinite gulf between uh, He and us. We would, we would never be so uh, cavalier as to say, oh, well, this just has no consequences or, or whatever. We, we just we even talk that way. Now, you also have people who talk this way about positive things. They, they uh, regularly will attend uh, Sunday morning worship. They're regularly involved in the Christian community. And they might say the, uh, something similar, but this has had no benefit for me. This hasn't benefited me. It hasn't helped me. In fact, my Sunday morning time has cost me money, cost me time, it's cost me friends. Mm -mm. And, and they'll, they'll go the other way. The one, so let's get these two groups of people. The one is doing something wrong, says, ah, no consequences. The other one is doing something right, says, hmm, no benefit. Well, hmm, like that. Well, let's look at a couple of passages of Scripture, and then we'll make some comments. Won't be a long video today. We're kind of getting to the kind of place where people think, where people live today. So let's go and have a look at this. Now, I've got, of course, uh, uh, images about negative consequences, the sad young lady and the judge and the guy, you know, in prison. But um, there's two sides to this, as I just said. In Psalm 12, 8, the Bible talks about the condition of a culture where it says, when vileness is exalted among the sons of mankind, the wicked strut about on every side. We have a place in our culture today where vileness is exalted and the wicked strut about. And this does influence um, uh, Christians. It influences people who don't want to be part of it, but you, in some respects, can't help but be dragged down by the things around us. The Apostle Paul, writing in Romans 1, a passage not nearly often, not considered nearly enough by people. You need to think about this passage. It talks about the, it says this, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. This is very important. This is such an important statement Paul makes. Look at it again. Since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. People often get this uh, feeling about uh, cultures, about societies, or about their own life, that, um, oh, I've done something negative, I've done something bad, or I'm doing it, I'm not repenting, I'm not turning from it, I'm not acknowledging it's a problem, I'm not seeking help for it, I'm not trying to get it out of my life, um, but there's no consequences. Well, God is saying to us in this passage that the thing you're doing is the consequence itself. The fact that you're even doing it is the judgment. Okay, that's really interesting. It's like, my, it, it, it's like, well, look at me. You know, God will never get me for this. The this is God getting you, if you will, the very thing that you're doing. It's really important to see that. Now, let's have a look at another scripture that I have um, used just a couple of weeks ago that talks about the heart of someone 
who's just not quite right with God, or maybe not right at all with God. This is from the Root of Bitterness passage. Very important concept idea here. Let me just rerun it before you. Beware lest there be any among you, a man or woman or clan or tribe, whose heart is turning away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of those nations. Beware lest there be among you a root bearing poisonous and bitter fruit. One who, when he hears the words of this sworn covenant, blesses himself in his heart, saying, I shall be safe, though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart. This will lead to the sweeping away of the moist and the dry alike. Now, this is talking about um, someone really saying that their actions have no consequences. Um, they're all fine. Now, let's come back to our, to our opening point. And I don't, we're not going to be long today. In fact, we're going to be very brief compared to my other videos. Because it's just something to, for you to take away and to ponder and to think about for your own life. Because, again, it's Communion Sunday. All right. Someone gets caught doing something negative, and maybe gets caught. They've been at it for a long time. Usually, it's not just, I'm, I just made a mistake. It's something that is part of their soul, and they've been grinding away at this. They get exposed. It's like time to fix this. And they'll say, uh, look, this hasn't had any consequences. This has no impact on me whatsoever. First of all, after 40 years of experience in ministry and talking to many different pastors about this very thing, everyone who says it is in trouble. No one who's walking close to God would ever dare to make a statement like that. He'd never dare. The closer, the closer you get, the less likely you are to say that, because the more we are aware of the infinite distance of, between himself and us, even though he has uh, reconciled us with himself, we're very concerned about our day-to-day -day actions, so we'd never say it. But on the other side, though, and, and of course what people will say is... Um, is just exactly what this passage we just looked at said. On the other side, though, people will say, well, you know, I've attended uh, uh, church all of my life or whatever. It's never brought me anything. It's cost me money, cost me time, etc., etc. It hasn't benefited me either. No consequences. Well, let's talk about the ultimate consequence. The ultimate consequence of something like attending public worship, particularly with a good attitude, but the ultimate consequence of that is that God receives honor and glory. That is the highest consequence. So you say, well, you know, what has this done for me? It's not about you. It's about giving God glory. Think about this. Think really carefully about this. See, our um, individualistic, self-centered Western culture, but it's, it really happens all over the world, is way, way t too tied up with um, us doing things and God giving us nice things back. This is not the God of the nations, the gods of the Gentiles. This is not the pagan gods who you have to appease. This is not how God works. This is just not the way. <laughs> what really we need to understand is that our highest obligation, the highest consequence of our actions, is the glorification of God. And if we fail to do that, then we fall way below that. We don't. We're not glorifying him anymore. Now look at the guy who's been caught or the woman who's been caught in the negative activity. All right. Uh, well, this hasn't, this, 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 um, uh, I've been doing this and, 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 and it's of no consequence to me. It has never affected me. What are you saying? What you've done and what you're saying is that, or what's really happening is you're denying God the glory due his name. You are not glorifying his name. You are denigrating his name with your actions and you're flaunting it. So is there a consequence? Yes. How, how great is the consequence? Ultimate. It is an infinite consequence. All right? And so this sort of sets us up in a, in a different way. It helps us as Christians to really understand our place and our purpose in the eternal scheme of things. We have been saved. We've been made right with God to bring him glory, to glorify him. The plan of salvation is to bring God honor and glory. This is a uh, it's incontrovertible, and you can't escape, you can't get out of this. Somebody said, well, God saved me so that I wouldn't have to have a, you know, be lost eternally. No, he saved you for his glory. We've talked about that. We need to talk about that again going forward. So we just had a quick little devotional look at a, at a what I believe to be a very important conversation, something we need to think about. Do my actions bring God glory? Do my actions honor him and glorify him? If they do, I have the highest and the greatest consequence. What if my actions cause difficulty for me, but they still glorify God? That's not an issue. You, glorify, you choose to glorify God, even though they cost you. They might cost you time, money, whatever. Understanding this also helps us to understand 
uh, biblical history, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and church history. Many, many of those who've gone before us chose to honor God, chose to do the right thing at the expense of their lives, their family, their income, and so on. And many of us have done that today. We've chosen to honor God, even though it's been economically costly or costly to our health or costly to relationships. And when I say us, I'm, I, I, I wish I could include myself there. I'm always a bit humbled when I look at this topic, but certainly I have been around great people who have paid a very high price because they've known it is worth glorifying God. Now that's a very interesting conversation, isn't it? I'm not going to push this too much farther today. I'm going to thank you for coming back and thank you for subscribing and thank you for visiting. And we're on to some very interesting conversations in the weeks to come. We want to look at the pyramid builders and see what the Bible says about those who built some of those ancient um, uh, structures in Scripture. And you'll find my position on this. And uh, you might not agree with my position, but at least it'll give you a line in the sand. And of course, it's also Advent. It's also the time we're going to celebrate and look at the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, but also his incarnation. That's the events around what we have begun to call or what we call Christmas. So God bless you. My name is Al Persson. I hope that you are able to come back and visit with me again. God bless you. We will be in touch.